Welcome back to I'm Still Here. I'm Larry. And I'm Heather. In 1998, at the age of 26, I was diagnosed with stage 4 breast cancer. It changed everything for us, but I'm still here. You are. Woo! Yes. And we are excited um, about kicking off a new series. Mm -hmm. But before we do that, we want to do a little recap. Right? A reminder. A reminder. Yeah. Yeah. So when we first started this uh, podcast... Our first episode was about kind of my diagnosis and that, you know, the first initial moments. And we would like you to go back and check that out this week before we launch into our new series. Because that's really going to lead us into this new series called... Five to Thrive. Five to Thrive. And this is um, by far the most uh, succinct and planned out thing that we've put together. Um, we're excited for you guys to hear it and see it. Um, we're going to have a, some downloads available for you guys. Uh, for those people who maybe uh, a podcast is not good enough. Um, or need to review it. Or, or as part it. of my daily practice, I reviewed things every day throughout. Yeah. You know. We also have some new meditations coming your way that, that get a little bit more specific for those of you guys in treatment. Um, which can really help mm -hmm. and help Heather. Uh, so we're excited about this coming your way and yeah. that's going to start next week. That's going to start next Wednesday and uh, I don't know what yes. the date is. I don't, yeah, <laughs> we're Whatever. bad at dates, yeah. but yeah, yeah, check it out. We're excited to see it. So enjoy, uh, episode one You'll, again. Well, I'm sure we'll look a lot younger from that, on that first we podcast. We should have switched spots or something <laughs> uh, for All those right. of you watching. But, <laughs> yes. Yep. All right. Episode one. We'll see ya. So, it, you know, when you find out about cancer, they always, they stage cancer. So it's like stage one, stage two, stage three, and stage four. I had a surgeon who kind of like quoted all the stats to me. And um, let, let's say stick in your heads like they did mine. I'm not going to quote them to you, no. you know. Um, but, initially, but stage four is kind of the worst stage. It means that the cancer is not only, in my case, started in the breast, but it's traveled past the lymph nodes and then to an organ, which, you know, that can be different things. Sure. For, for me, it was, well, we'll talk about that in a minute too, but um, that's what it means. So metastatic and stage four mean the same thing. Mm -hmm. But um, Which, yeah, the statistics aren't real good for that. No, um, um, that's not the category you want to land in, you know. But somehow you're still here. And, yeah, and, and that's, and there, and, and there are many women that are, We're, people are making it, but mm -hmm. But yeah. Yeah. So in the future, you know, with, with our future podcasts, we're definitely going to be trying to um, reach out to resources that, that we don't have to also. Maybe from questions that we get from you guys or uh, from topics that come up from yeah. from that. But also, we, we you know, we want to hear success stories. We want to hear from other women that are out there that that have somehow, and they are not going to know either, yeah. <laughs> but somehow they're still here too. And you know what? Let's share the good news. Let's Let's share... The fact that uh, they're doing something right, and maybe somebody else can get a yeah. grain of yeah. that. I guess with that too, I want I want to say that it, it is not. I do not feel like people who die of cancer didn't do something. Like I feel like that's no. such a myth. You know what I mean? Like the fighting, the cancer, fighting, yeah. the whole the whole uh, thought of like. Oh, they they lost their battle. Like we can talk about all that stuff more, but I'm not here to say that that people that die of cancer uh, didn't do something. I don't feel that no, way right. at all. Nor did you necessarily do right. something, right? Right. It's absolutely. There's it a, it a whole bunch of things. Not, not, we're going to get into some of the things you did do, and it right. was a choice that you did yep. that, and and it was different. Some of the things you did was. Oh, sure was life changing things life altering the the way you were living you you changed those in a, in a very specific 180 yeah. you know on some things and it could have made a difference we don't know absolutely but, but you had to try something right well i i did because that's what felt good to me well let's right? let's go back to to 24 years ago or whatever <laughs> yeah. that is and and that crappy uh news that we got why don't you tell us a little bit about yeah, that yeah so what what had happened was um it was December of 1998. So crazy to think about that. Um, and I, I actually was just going to kind of a follow-up appointment oh, that's right. with um, my, my OBGYN doctor. 
So um, we went to an appointment. We actually had a pretty good relationship with this doctor, kind of a little bit more than just like our doctor, a little bit of a friend's situation. But I remember going to that appointment. It was an evening appointment. Sydney was with us. Um, mm -hmm. She was 14 months old at the time. And as soon as the appointment started, my doctor was really focused on my left breast and the fact that my nipple was retracted. Which we had never heard was anything unusual. Hadn't heard that. And also, like, I felt like people had seen it all the way along because it, it had been retracted um, throughout the pregnancy. It retracted yeah. more. And after, I, you know, when I gave birth, all that stuff. So it's it just didn't seem unusual Like somebody me. would have said something. Yeah, right? yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, that definitely triggered something. And I could see a change in my doctor right right then. And I was Things you notice after, after the fact. Yeah. I was actually complaining about this pain in my sternum. And, I, you know, occupational therapist, I worked in the schools. I would carry bags of stuff in and out. And honestly, a lot of times it'd feel better if I just took Tylenol, too. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like it was a no. big deal, right? right? But I just said, yeah, this is, this is happening, too. I, you know, just as a side note, I had just resigned from my job. I was in the process of switching from one school district to the other. So, like, you know... Great timing on that, but that's how <laughs> life works, right? So anyway, my doctor says, oh, we need to do some more testing. Which and at the time, we're like, okay. Yeah, whatever, yeah. right? And and I didn't, I don't even know if she really said cancer that. I think she said it, maybe it could be cancer, but it could also be a cyst, I believe, yeah. is a lot. Of what oh, that, that's what it was. Right, yeah, and yeah. we're like, okay, 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 that'd be great. Like, whatever. So we start the testing, and every <laughs> test went poorly. Like, it, I, it, it, it was quite a run. It wasn't a cyst. You know, like, I, they tried to do, like, get the get fluid out of it. Mm -hmm. No fluid, right? Um, I don't remember all of them. I, I remember a couple things very specifically. Um, I remember the biopsy. Um, and they did a needle core biopsy, which is kind of like, I don't know, like a jagged needle where they I'm kind sure of... I'm sure some of the people the, watching yeah, know exactly sure, what you're talking exactly. about. Yeah. So anyway, they did that biopsy. And I remember in that situation that I had a newer person kind of digging around in there. That was my first experience with like... Student. Yeah, stay, say something if you don't want, you know, somebody new to be working on you. Um, I, and my doctor actually came into that too and just was standing at the end you know, watching and trying to support me through that. But basically what we found out was that, you know, we just kind of, all of the stages kept slipping away, right? Yeah. And what ended up happening, so the, the first appointment, I found out that it was cancer like on the 10th or whatever. On the 17th, it was a, another Thursday night or afternoon, evening. We spent the day doing testing. I remember... Um, <laughs> That's when the doctor... Gave yeah. you the stages, I believe. No, well, Isn't I it? think, no, that oh, was no, prior was to that. Okay. We had met that. The surgeon gave me the st stages. We thought we were going to just kind of like, you know, once we found out it was cancer, we thought, oh, we'll just take it out. It won't have gone anywhere. That would be mm. fine. But then um, I did a bone scan. I remember the first bone scan was I was laying on this table, and the, the way it was set up, like, I felt kind of exposed anyway. Like, it was sort of out it felt like it was out in a hall which i know it wasn't but i there was activity behind me yeah i could hear like the techs talking about like vacations and blah 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 which and, is a whole nother yeah we're we'll gonna talk, spend we'll multiple episodes <laughs> on, that. on that but um but also i could sort of see the screen and I, it it had you know it has your skeleton kind of in this like it's like this movie like kind of spacey sort of thing but then there's bright spots right uh -huh. and i was like oh i'm thinking that maybe th good. those aren't good right anyway but of course they don't tell you that no and as soon as i got off the table they said we need you to go to x-ray and i had an appointment with an oncologist then at that time like i knew i was already kind of going to be late for it and i said that and i said and i was standing there of course in, in a, a gown, gown huge gown holding the back of it closed because that's the way it works and I was saying no I have to get to this appointment and they're like no that'll wait you need to go to x-ray and that's where I remember talking to you I remember talking I remember to you this conversation too and I this was 24 years yeah ago, and, and I, I remember it. I said something um I just I don't like I about going and you said something and I said or maybe it's everywhere. I just remember falling apart right yeah, then. I remember that too. And then I couldn't, and, and then you, you have to like, 
walk in with this x-ray tech who you don't know, yeah. you know, and again, I get it that some of that is uncomfortable, but it's also like, there's better ways to handle it. But I remember like being asked little questions and I was like, please yeah. just stop, like, please. So we, we do the x-rays also. And then, <laughs> gosh, it even gets worse. It was quite a, quite a way. Uh, way to go but we went and there's people at and i know shaking their head going, i know i know you've been there yes it's so yeah. true so then we went to the uh, we got to the oncology office which was we kind of had to drive somewhere again december in michigan in the evening dark and and we get into this and um and the doctor he came in first and he yeah. said have you talked to your regular or have you talked to your doctor and we said, no, we came right here. And he was very upset. And he left and he walked out in, you know, paper thin walls. We could hear him on the phone with our doctor yelling at her that he did not have to give this news, that this was not news that he was supposed to deliver. And, and we heard it all. We heard he, it all. And then he came in. And then he came in. And I was sitting, I feel like I had a gown on, but I don't know why I would because like, why the heck would you need, be, need to be in a gown at that point? But I definitely, don't remember that. All I remember is holding my breath <laughs> but, and couldn't breathe. And But yeah. that definitely sitting on that paper, you know, that crinkly paper that's so terrible. Um, yeah. And I and I, so I sort of above him and he sat down in his stool and he looked up at me and he said, you need to get your affairs in order. And I, I remember again... Like I looked, I shot right back at him and I said, I'm 26 years old and this is the best you can do for me. And he then said, we can try some chemo when I get back from skiing, but I'm not making any promises. If there's any doctors out there watching, oh my Lord, really? <laughs> please, Are you kidding me? Please, please. How not to do things. And at this point I was absolutely no help whatsoever because I can remember literally not being able to breathe going, uh, I feel like I'm just a kid still. And now... What? Yeah. What? We yeah. just got married not too long ago. Yeah. And what? Yeah. So he, yeah. he, you know, he did backtrack a little bit, and he said that they were doing some um, experimental yeah. things at yeah. a different at a university. We weren't at a university center, and we, you know, but I was like, I'm done. And then the nurse comes in, and she, I mean, again, well-meaning, but she hands us a bunch of pamphlets. Like, and I just, I still have just, like, you get the worst news of your life and somebody hands you something to read. And it just seems so inadequate, right? Like, yeah, you know, <laughs> and she asked about, like, setting up chemo and things like that. And we were just like, nope, we're, we're leaving. We're leaving. Like, and that's we walked we out. We walked out. And that day ended with, you know, from a, from a caregiver or from, I, I had to call your mom. Yeah, I just and didn't. Wow, that's not a phone call you ever want to <laughs> no. make. My gosh. I sat beside him while he called my mo mom, and I don't know why. I just didn't want to tell her. No. I didn't want to have to tell her. No one does that. Yeah. You know. It takes me back right now to that yep. moment. I mean. It was it was terrible. No. You know, and in the midst of this, we have a fourteen month old who's like, bah, da, 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 which no is kidding. good and bad, right? And life goes on, and we're going to talk about that. Yeah. You know, coming up here. Yeah. We're, so let's just yeah. finish with what happened the next day. When, okay. And then, yeah. and then, um, yeah, then we'll wrap things up and tell you about what what we're gonna do next. So, um, after you called my mom, yep. she made a phone call to my older brother who had uh, who was actually doing a residency or serving some. I don't know. He's a doctor in Grand Rapids, I think. He's no, he was. Well, in he Texas. was. Yeah. 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 So anyway. She called him, and he then kind of dropped everything, and he called um, where he'd gone to middle, or to medical school, which I, I you know, U of M, right? Yeah, University, University of Michigan. Michigan. We're good. We're go blue, right? <laughs> um, but he he made a bunch of phone calls, and he kept getting this name of one doctor, and and was able to track her down, and she ended up like on a Saturday. No, it was a Friday. It was a Friday. Um, I remember, so on, on that Friday, you, we decided that you would go to school because it was, again, it was getting close. It was maybe the Life day before Christmas break, right? Yeah. He's a teacher. 
Um, we're realizing he's going to be taking time off. Mm -hmm. he, you know, a new teacher doesn't have a ton of sick days, all that kind of stuff. Sure, so gosh. he goes to work. Yeah. And I'm sitting at home. Alone. Alone. I said it was there. But again, it's like, it's the most surreal thing. Um, and so I decided, I called one of my closest, she was a friend and colleague at the time. And she she lived about, I don't know, about an hour away. And she's like, calm down. and just Before that, I believe you were watching TV and everything on TV. Somehow that day had something to do with cancer well, you or know, dying. I or... mean, all the pharmaceutical ads. Right. And just everything, everything you everything notice. Is, again, we'll right. talk about that next time too. But everything yeah. is like too much or too little. It's yeah. There's just no happy medium anymore. But so I decided to take Sydney and go visit my friends. And when I got there, um, this oncologist actually called me. And again, 1998, right? Like this is, I don't, I think it probably was on a cell phone, but it was, you know... It, yeah, know. this was back in the day. But the, everything changed then, even right then. She called and she started talking to me. And all of the questions were like, how old are you? What do you do? Are you married? Tell me about your daughter. Like all of these different things. And then she said to me, she said, cancer doesn't scare me. I see how it works. And I, it, it just was so reassuring. <laughs> it just felt so good. And then her final words to me, and this is again, December, it would have been December 18th, I think. So right before Christmas, she said, um, drink some green tea, eat some fruits and vegetables, and we'll start killing cancer on Monday. And man. A little bit different. Man. A little bit different than maybe we can do something when I get back from my ski trip. Yeah. I hope you watch this, sir. I don't know your name, but I hope you watch this. So, yeah. Good. Yeah, so... That's where we started from. And again, at 26 and 28, yeah. we, we, were not prepared. we were babies. I mean, yeah. our, our, our daughter is 24 now. And I just mm -hmm. look at that and go, oh my gosh. So Life changing. And yeah. you people, you know, you, you know too. You, yeah. you know exactly what we're talking about. Yep. And we're going to, you know, for, you know, maybe somebody watches this right after they were diagnosed. And, and that's what we're, so the next episode is going to be kind of, what do you do? Yeah. You know, after that initial shock, what are some things that we did? I shouldn't say, what do you do? You do what you do. Yeah. But we're going to tell you about what she did, what we did, how we think some of the, we look back now after a lot of years and we go, that was a good thing. That, yeah. that was a good thing. Yeah. That was a, we're going to talk about those things. Yeah. And maybe somebody takes one bit of that and says, wow, thank you for that. And that's why we're well, doing and this. I, and also just to confirm, I think a lot of the things that you're probably already thinking, or even just like the chaos that people don't necessarily understand, like I, you know, all I it, I just can't stop thinking about. It just feels like your world is spinning. It's spinning. It's spinning. You know, so how dealing with that that spin, and a lot of times, um, yeah, figuring out what you're thinking versus what you should do next. So, yeah, there's a lot there. Yeah. And uh, that even being your spouse during that time, I can't even touch on or, or pretend like I understand or, or or can relate to that. No, but I let's I will let's I'll leave you with this too. I remember that I think it was that Thursday night that we were we were laying in bed and I said, "Are you are you scared? I don't. Did I say are you scared?" Oh, I know. I said, are you scared to be alone? And he and you responded with, I'm not scared to be alone. I'm scared to be without you. And it just, it is, it's life changing for everybody, right? It so, is. For but sure. there's. We're going to talk about fun things. There's too, good though. things too. Yeah. yeah. And absolutely. we're going to talk a lot, a lot of those. How there is, you know, a future and, and, and get into that. So. Yeah. Thank you very much for joining us. And we will have the next episode yeah. out and we're, as soon as we can. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm still here. There we go.